Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special Christmas edition of the show. So um, I, I sometimes try to theme these Christmas shows every once in a while, but this one I really wanted to theme into a specific type of thing. So a few weeks ago I was trying to figure out, you know, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do an Italian Christmas thing. He already did that, the first Christmas special. So um, I thought, well, let's do some other type of Christmas thing. So I decided we'll do uh, Spanish wines. Now, I don't have any Spanish food here to pair with it. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the food. But I, I thought about getting wines uh, specifically that would go with a Spanish Christmas. So the first thing that I did was I started investigating uh, what, or, or Spanish speaking, let's say, but Spain. Um, so what type of food do they eat in Spain for Christmas? And as I found out, most of the world that celebrates Christmas tends to have similar uh, foods. Now, there are some ethnic differences, but things like ham are pretty universal. Um, and then also turkey, believe it or not. So um, ham and turkey seem to show up everywhere when you look up what the traditional Christmas, um, Christmas food, especially when you're talking about the Americas or Europe. Um, I didn't go any farther than that, really. But those tend to be the traditional um, foods for Christmas. So I, I thought I'd kind of go over real quick um, uh, Mexico and Spain specifically. Since I am in San Antonio and we have a heavily Mexican influence here, I thought I'd kind of go through real quick what, what some of the stuff they do. We'll have a Christmas roast. They have what's called pavo, a stuffed roast turkey served with a gravy. Uh, ensalada de Noche Buena uh, is a Christmas Eve salad. Then there's Russian potato salad. Now this is... Seems like it's everywhere. I don't remember ever growing up. Well, we're Italian family, so we didn't really have the quote traditional American uh, food all the time. But pota Russian potato salad seems to happen all through Europe or countries that were heavily influenced by Europe. And this is a side dish of turkey, particularly popular in northern states of um, Mexico. Um, uh, bacalao is a clip fish or cod traditionally eaten in central or southern states of Mexico. Uh, Romeritos, uh, also a Christmas tradition in the central region. Uh, there are small green leaves of a particular type of mix, a particular type mixed generally with mole and potatoes. Uh, accompanied with uh, tortillas de camarón, which is, uh, well, they translate it shrimp bread. Um, tamales, the tamales, you cannot go anywhere in, in this part of the country and not encounter some awesome tamales for Christmas, just let you know. Um, it says uh, they can sometimes replace traditional turkey or bacalao with uh, romeritos, uh, particularly in the northern and southern parts of Mexico. Menudo, um, a Christmas morning tradition in northwestern states, is a tripe and hominy soup, uh, not to be confused with uh, panzita or the musical group Menudo. Um, it's often prepared the night before on Christmas Eve, as its cooking time can take cooking time can take up to five hours. I didn't know that about menudo. I mean, I've had it. It's okay. I don't like get all worked up about it. Um, ponche, uh, a hot sweet drink made with apples, sugar cane, prunes, and teo, teo, teocotes. I didn't look up to see what that was. I'm sure, it's some other type of fruit. Uh, for grown ups, ponche is never complete without its piquette or tequila or rum. Then they have a marshmallow fruit salad. This is all from Wikipedia, by the way. So. I'm not saying this is the definitive list of Mexican Christmas dishes, but um, that's like a marshmallow fruit salad. I'm like, okay. Uh, marshmallow fruit cocktail, sugar and sour cream, sometimes dried coconut, ground cinnamon, and or nuts are also added. And then pineapple upside down cake. Okay. Uh, and glazed ham. In Spain, again, from Wikipedia, the Book of Knowledge, also known as that, uh, 
jamón, which is Spanish dry cured ham. Uh, it just says meat, so I'm, I'm assuming beef. Uh, roasted turkey, roasted lamb, seafood, uh, langostinos, king, which is king prawn, shrimp, lobster, crab, dorado, which is the Spanish word for mahi-mahi, the same fish, and they go sweets. And then they have a, a sweet, so, so one of them is called uh, torron. Uh, there's two varieties, you have a hard and a soft variety. And the hard is a compact block of whole almonds and a brittle mass of eggs, honey, and sugar, about 60% almonds. And then in the soft one, the almonds are reduced to a paste. The addition of oil makes the matrix more chewy and sticky. And it says 64% almonds. Then we have yema, which is an egg-based dessert, uh, mantecados and polvorones, or, or crumbly cakes, marzipan, almond cakes, and then king cake known as rascón de reyes in Spanish and tortel in Catalan. Cool. Um, no, not ours. So, um, so just think about wines that I would <clears throat> hope that would pair well with these things. Um, Lots of cool stuff looking there. And uh, so I thought we'd, we'd do four wines. And really why I did four wines is I really wanted to include sherry instead of just having white, red, and then a sparkling to kind of start things off. I wanted to have a sherry in here. And this also is a great way for me to kind of reinforce sherry knowledge for myself and have a sherry I've never had. Well, I don't really have very many sherries at our, sommeliers, uh, our San Antonio Sommelier Association meeting um, last week. Uh, which is the second Tuesday of the month, <clears throat> we did fortified wine, so port, sherry, and marsala. And I'm pretty sure it's the first time I've actually ever had marsala, like meant for consumption, not for cooking. Um, and sherry, I can't remember the last time, if ever, I've had a sherry. I've had many ports or port-style wines, um, so that was familiar. But, but uh, sherry and... Um, uh, Marsala were definitely wines that I'm not familiar with. And I wanted to get something specific, and we'll get to that when we, when we get to it. So let's, let's kind of talk, um, talk about the wines. So I want to start off with a Spanish sparkling wine. Now, pretty much that means cava. And for uh, the most part, that means um, uh, uh, Frisionette, uh, and not Frisionne, as most people say, it's kind of like, you know, Moet. It's not Moe. The umlaut over the E's means you pronounce the, I, I guess means you pronounce the T. Um, so I can remember, I've mentioned this quite a few times before. I remember hearing people say Moet and go, you don't know what you're talking about. And then finding out that that's actually the correct pronunciation. So I went with a, a, a cava from Frisionet that um, is... Not that what everybody sees uses the, the black the black bottle which I've had before. I want to go with this one. This is the Carta Nevada, and um, I'm going to try to get to here we go. And it, uh, harvest starts at the end of August with a uh, Macabeo, and then ends at the beginning of October with a Pariata. Um, the first fermentation is done in stainless steel tanks. Um, blah, blah blah. Fermentation lasts about ten to fifteen days, and once it's complete, it's racked and clarified. The blend is prepared for then the, the blend is then prepared for bottling, and a secondary fermentation has begun in the bottle, and uh, it's aged for up to twelve months in a cave. Um, so uh, basically, um, so this is done in what's called the traditional method or method champon, champ, champenois or champagne method. Um, so it's the second fermentation is done in the bottle. Yes, I know I'm using. A regular wine bottle, a regular wine glass, um, and uh, something different than you know having the traditional Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, so Macabeo and Pariada, which are grapes native to uh, Spain, and this is a brute, I believe, if I remember correctly. Matter of fact, I don't. Yes, brute, right here on the top, uh, non-vintage, and. We go get the receipt because everything is I got from Total Wine. So while I walk back here, I wonder if you can see me on the camera. Now nothing was really a big uh, for this for this thing was really a big uh, um, huge expense. New Year's Eve party. I mean New Year's Eve New Year's Eve one actually have a one that's not. 
too, too expensive, but pretty expensive. Anyway, so the uh, Frisionette, this is, well, it lists for $8.49 a bottle. Now, I bought it as a six-pack, so you get a discount. With a, I bought six wines, and it came out to $7.64. And while we're thinking about it, before I even get to it, I'm going to get that started. So, um, Frisionette, huge, huge... Uh, Spanish sparkling wine company. Um, I'm sure there's others out there, but I'm not familiar with any of the other ones. Uh, but they make good quality stuff. They make a wide range of sparkling wine, and Cava is cheap. And I mean, cheap as an inexpensive, not cheap as necessarily quality. Uh, I mean, yeah, you probably can find some not so good Cava. But I wanted to go with something a little bit different, and uh, let's check it out. On the nose, you get a little bit of nuttiness, uh, some apricot. And I didn't get the nuttiness like kind of, you know, didn't have my nose stuck so far down into the uh, into the glass. I got the nuttiness as I pulled away. But yeah, like really kind of a nuttiness to it. Apricot. Maybe a bit of white flour. Um, Really nice nose, but a very delicate nose. Maybe a little almond, okay? Nothing overpowering. It's like you really kind of have to pull these out. Um, if you're just kind of just sticking your nose in it, you might just go, oh, I can smell it's a sparkling wine because you can kind of get that effervescence a little bit out of it. Um, but uh, doing a search for one of the wines here. Anyway, um, nice pleasant nose. I really get the nuttiness a lot now. Get that first taste. Got the nuttiness um, a lot in the first taste, but get that first taste, kind of get shock the system real quick. I'm gonna take another taste here. Yeah, really get that almond, um, that almond flavor. Um, very high, well, yeah, high acid, really acidic. Um, not so much, not so much lemony citrus, but there, there is that associated acid and lemon type of zest maybe with it. Um, but definitely almonds, you know, got nuts in my mouth. How to say it, how to say it, sorry. Um, and, uh, but it really tastes, in fact, I could really think about having that Torone. Um, it, it makes me, the way the description is, makes me think of Torone, which is an Italian version. It's, it's, um, did I say Torone? It's Torone. Torone is the um, Italian word for it, but that type of confectionery, that type of thing. I haven't had one of those in a long time. I'm not a huge fan of nut type of food. Um, it's weird. I, 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 I don't, I like nuts. I like to eat them separately. You know, like pistachios and pistachios mostly. Peanuts, I love. Um, almonds, cashews, they're kind of okay. But I like to have them separate. I don't like to have them integrated in my food. Um, however, I, you know, I, I've come, to, I've come to be a fan of Spanish, not Spanish, uh, spinach. Another SP word. Spinach salads, and a lot of times they have some type of nut, usually pecan, but have some type of nut in them. So I've kind of grown to just accept that, and it's you know, but the flavor profile works for it. Get a little bit of sweetness to it, especially if it's like a candied pecan. It's really tasty. Got a good bit of fizz to it. Every year I say this, I'll say it for next week too. The whole reason you have flutes is so you can get the bubbles. That's it. You can't smell stuff. <laughs> it's hard to, I mean, you can, but. 
See, it's so hard to really get a good, you can't get a good swirl or anything in a, in a freaking champagne flute. This type of glass, you can really swirl it and get, and get the aromas. Though for the New Year's episode, I'll have the champagne flute to, to finish things off. Hmm. Yeah, a bit of nuttiness, maybe a little bit of apple too, like green apple. That's probably more than like the lemony citrus thing. Get a little green apple, a little almond. It's kind of developing. Um, really nice and smooth. You could really eat this with something like <clears throat> something like a nut type of confectionery, nuts and cheeses to start off your meal. Um, that type of that type of thing. Wouldn't necessarily pair it with you know a, a, a salami type of or you know a meat type of platter but if you have your cheeses and some nuts to start things off I think it would be absolutely perfect uh, pairing if you can find it buy it which I'm sure you can find it in your in regular wine shops because uh, it is um, come on man there we go because it is really really nice here we go that's what I want right there so let's move on to wine Number two, wine number two, make sure what I need is in this email. Wine number two is uh, Bergans Albarino, uh, 2013 from the Rios Baixas uh, area of Spain. Now Albarino, uh, another uh, great native to Spain, uh, really produces these nice, crisp white wines. Um, I, I really like them. They're kind of the Pinot Grigio of Spain, but I feel like they have more flavor than Pinot Grigio. And I, I know somebody that uh, really, really um, like disparaged the uh, the Albarino grape uh, quite a few months ago it was just like, ah, it sucks. I'm like, all right, sure. You know, but anyway, um, I paid 15. Oh, you know what? I had everything in my notes. What do you know? Uh, well, it lists for fifteen ninety nine dollars uh, at Total Wine, and I actually paid fourteen thirty nine dollars with the discount. Whenever you can get discounts on anything, uh, that's an awesome thing to be able to do. Trust me, um, especially when you're financing your own alcohol, hit the PayPal button. Yeah, I got that done early. Especially when you're financing your own alcohol. Uh, anyway, so trying to pull up this uh, the website for this um, for this wine ooh such a nice nose I don't know how anybody could just disparage Albarino I mean maybe you've just been drinking really bad Albarino but there's like a sweetness to the to the nose Like a honeydew, melon, cantaloupe. Almost like the interior of that cantaloupe. Um, yeah, okay. Um, really, really nice on the nose. Not much floral, no, no evidence of wood. Maybe even like cantaloupe rind. Yeah, there's really nothing else on the website for that. Um, I'm intrigued with the nose. Let's see how it tastes. I have to say, the nose intrigues me more than the palate. It's not bad, but I really was expecting a little bit more out of it. So there you go. Someone, oh, see, I told you Albrino sucks. But now the, the flavor is really kind of lingering in my palate, so I'm starting to get 
more of that fruit, more really good acid, medium plus a high acid on this. Um, this is to me something that you would have with your salads. Um, with uh, you could have it with your your uh, what's it uh, toron the the mahi mahi. Um, so you could have it with your fish. You could have it with your salads. Um, Dorado, that's what I was looking for, for the mahi-mahi. <laughs> Very citrus as far as lemon-lime, uh, high acid. I really wish the cantaloupe flavor would have come through uh, on the palate. It's really more on the nose. But I think the nose is great on this thing. I just think the palate kind of falls a little short of the expectation <clears throat> because I felt that the, the nose was pretty aromatic. And white wines for me, when I get an aromatic white wine is, is like awesome because I tend to struggle with getting aromatics on white wines. really a ta nice tartness to it and like I mean a really a, and it, it, the flavors change a little bit the lemon is really coming through but it's like this really really ripe I want to say ripe but just this rich lemon flavor almost like a lemon sour almost like a, you know something like that but pretty good I mean it's it's a $16 bottle of wine it's not a bad bottle of wine I wouldn't tell you to not buy it, but um, I've had other Alborinos that are about the same price or a little bit less that I felt were better. How about that? But it's still not a bad wine. If you serve this for Christmas, it's not going to disappoint. I don't think it will. All right. What do you know? I actually got that done pretty quickly. All right. Let's move on to wine number three. All right, wine number three. This is the 2005 uh, Valserrano uh, Gran Reserva Rioja. Now, I really want to do some Rioja. I like Rioja. Rioja is an awesome, uh, is an awesome wine. Um, paid, or it's listed for $29.99. Uh, so we're going to call this our premium, uh, our premium selection. So $29.99. Uh, at Total Wine, I actually paid $26.99 with the discount. And I did not look up anything about, um, about this winery itself. But uh, basically know that Rioja is predominantly Tempranillo for the grape. Um, Does it have, it just says straight up Rioja, it doesn't say where. Um, it's going to be mostly uh, mostly uh, Tempranillo. Um, you can also have Garnacha, which is the Spanish word for Grenache. Uh, Graciano and Manzuelo. Those are the other grapes that can be in a Rioja. Uh, it will typically consist of approximately 60% Tempranillo, 20% Garnacha, with smaller proportions of Manzuelo and Graciano. Um and there's no, as far as I know, there's no stipulation that you can't have 100% Tempranillo. Um, you can definitely kind of have your own, whatever percentage you want on it. But Tempranillo is the main grape. Tempranillo also is known by a ton of different names in Spain and in Portugal. So um, it's a grape that's kind of used everywhere in Spain, but it's most well known as, as Tempranillo in, uh, in Rioja. And it's also a, wine, a grape that's taking quite a bit of, or is uh, doing quite well in Texas overall. So um, it's being considered kind of the Texas grape, or one of the grapes that Texas can be known for. Ooh. 
The nose is starting to stop up. It's been great all day till just now. A bit of fruit on the, uh, like cherry almost. Yeah, pretty much cherry on the nose. Mixed with wood, kind of a cedar. Cedar box, cherries and cedar box. Cherries in a cedar box. That might be kind of cool. A bit of potpourri. Almost, um, I feel like they hit a hint of caramel or even cocoa. But it's, it feels like it's more mineral driven uh, than fruit driven. Really nice, really nice nose. Oops, didn't mean to spill a little bit. On the palate, again, it's got a balance of mineral and fruit. Um, medium body, I would say medium minus on the tannins. It doesn't feel really, really tannic. Um, it's kind of a light wine, almost light bodied. I'd call it medium, medium minus on the body. But I get, I get like almost like tobacco. So now I feel like that cedar box, that cigar box type of flavor, tobacco. Um, not as much on the fruit, but if I, if I have to identify the fruit, again, cherry on it. Like sour cherry. <laughs> really interesting. I, I totally can see this with ham. I think really, if you have like a honey glazed ham, I think that will the, the pairing will go great. Any meat, any any type of meat. Turkey, maybe not as much with the turkey. It might work if you had like a cranberry, some some type of cranberry stuff. It would contrast a little bit with or be a little bit contrasting with the cherry, especially because the cranberry might be a little tart. And the cherry's more like a sour cherry. Um, but I think that would work really, really well. Um, especially if it's roasted, so you've got the good herbs and spices. That I think will integrate really well with this particular wine or this style of wine. I think the earthiness of how you cook <clears throat> uh, your protein, how you cook the, the steak or the um, turkey or even the ham, if you have some good spices on, I think that would be outstanding with this. This is a really good wine. Um, I mean, really good. But it really begs for food. Like, I could drink this on its own in the bottle straight from the bottle with no food, and I would enjoy it. But I would be craving food. I'd be like, this need, I need something to go with this. Again, that really tart cherry is coming through now. I'd almost say cr cranberry too because I thought about cranberries, so maybe I'm trying to fit, trying to fit that description into there. But the tart, it's a very tart type of uh, fruit. Have you ever had straight real cranberry juice? It sucks. That's why they always sell it as cranberry cocktail. It got to add sugar to it. I had just straight up like organic cranberry juice. It was horrible. It was. It was really bad. I don't know how anyone can drink that just straight. All right, so <clears throat> now let's go to some sherry. I'm gonna close out of that. Now sherry, let's um, let's kind of talk about sherry and, and what it is. So sherry is a fortified wine from the southern part of Spain. Um, the the Sherez part of Spain, X E R E S. Um, so sherry is an Anglos is Anglization, an English version of, of, of that word. 
Um, and there's a ton of different ways to do sherry, but it's um, <clears throat> it's a fortified wine. They fortify it after uh, the after the uh, fermentation, um, on, as opposed to uh, port where they they ferment it during fermentation. Um, so it, uh, they fortified after fermentation, and you've got a bunch of different types of sherries. I'll, I'll run through the names real quick, but we'll focus on Oloroso. So, I'm sorry, Fino, um, or Fine, is the driest and palest of the traditional sherries. Uh, it's aged uh, in barrels under a cap of floor yeast to prevent contact with air. Floor is, is this kind of, well, it's the yeast, this yeast byproduct that, that f forms at the top of the wine in the barrel or in the fermentation tank and it blocks out oxygen so the wine can can stay that way and not oxidize uh, manzanilla um, is another form of fino sherry uh, manzanilla passata um, is gone undergone extended aging or has been partially oxidized um, giving a richer nuttier flavor uh, amontillado um, is a variety of sherry that's first aged under floor but then exposed to oxygen uh, Oloroso, which means scented, is a variety of sherry aged oxidatively for longer for a longer time than Fino or Amontillado, uh, producing a darker and richer wine with alcohol levels between 18 and 20 percent. They're the most alcoholic of sherries. Like uh, Amontillado, uh, naturally dry, they are also they are often also sold in sweetened version called cream sherry. Now, when I was looking for sherries. I could find regular finos, I could find cream sherries. And I want cream sherry, I wanted Oloroso. Very hard to find. So where did I get this? Well, I, I, I'm not saying I couldn't find this in San Antonio, I probably could have. But when I looked at the, the wine shops that have online presence, and I typed in Oloroso, nobody had it. And that was Total Wine in Specs. I'm not saying I couldn't find it, would not be able to find one at Total Wine, or find one at Specs, or gone to Joe, Sag, Joe Sags, Joe Sags and Benny. Um, I probably could have found one if I said, hey, I need an Oloroso, because somebody carries it in town, I guarantee you. Um, and, you know, I, I always forget, I, I can always call my wine distributor contacts and go, where can I find this stuff? But I want an Oloroso. I just want something that was different than, than the normal stuff. So I got this off of, oddly enough, wine.com for reals. I've been... I get emails from them all the time, always offering deals and stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to wine.com and, and see if I can get the wine. Because, see, the thing is, like, getting wine in Texas, among, along with other states, can be very tricky. You have to have certain type of licensing to, to, to import into Texas um, or into some other states similar. So, you have these wine shipping laws. And you, you, like, say, order from a retailer, order from a winery. They'll be like, well, we can only ship to these states. Texas is one of those states. It's kind of like you gotta you gotta be licensed to distribute in the state, which really you know is upsetting because you know I used to be able to order wine from Wine Library from you know old Gary V, and uh, uh, because there was a loophole in the way the law was that allowed retailers from out of the state to ship wines here, and then they closed the loophole back in two thousand nine ish I think it was two thousand ten. So nothing you could do. I mean, it's just I can't order from those guys anymore. But anyway, um, so wine.com can ship here. So I've got this. This is, um, let's get right down with the actual wine is. This is the El Maestro Sierra um, Oloroso. It's a 15-year-old Oloroso. And what does it say on here? Dry wine aged in American oak casks by oxidative aging. It's 19% alcohol. Now I got a 375, so I got a half bottle. Um... But the cool thing about this is once I've opened it, it doesn't matter. It's gonna stay pretty good for a while. So I don't have to worry about trying to drink this really quickly. I can, it, it, it'll last for quite a while. You know, I'll just put the screw cap back on. But it'll, it'll last for, for a long time. Anyway, um, it lists as $17.99. Now the frustrating part about this is shipping was $13.40. Uh, so, and then plus tax came out to like 34 bucks. So, it sucked that I had to spend 34 bucks for a little half bottle of, of uh, sherry, but I did. You know, I'm not going to rinse it out. I'm just going to put it right there. So anyway, so let's get back to let's get back to the other things of sherry. We'll cook. You have um, you have the uh, 
uh, Palo Cortado. It's a variety of sherry that's initially aged like an uh, Amontillado, uh, typically for three or four years, but which sub subsequently develops a character closer to Oloroso. Um, and then you have the uh, Cherez Dulce, which is sweet cherries, made by either fermenting dried uh, Pedro Jimenez or Muscatel grapes. Uh, then you have cream, like I said, you know, cream cherries. Anyway, um, and then you've got another, then you've got another classification of sweetness. Um, so the, the styles kind of dictate sweetness, but then you can have a, um, uh, you can have within that lots of differences. So the Oloroso, uh, like I said, is between 17, 22% alcohol and sugar contents between zero and five grams per liter. So, um, it's still gonna be pretty dry, or at least it should be pretty dry. Even dry goes from five to 45 grams per liter. And then you have pale cream, medium cream, you know, they start getting to really, really high end. You get the Dolce, which is uh, 160 plus grams um, per liter. So you've really got uh, a wide range of, of types of, of sherry. So let's get right into this particular sherry. You can already see, so it's oxidative. So you've, hopefully you can tell this is got kind of a brownish copper uh, color is different than you know a red wine so remember when I had the uh, uh, for Thanksgiving I had the the white Zin from 2009 it had this copperish color I told it, it was it smelled like it was cooked well same idea so a really rich caramel nose Ooh, dry, but really nutty. You know, we talked about this kind of nutty here, super nutty. Um, also, also kind of a little bit of salinity to it, kind of like salted nuts. I could totally see doing this with a um, with some type of nut-based dessert, um, but not too too terribly sweet. Um, it's got a bit of salinity to it. You can kind of feel the alcohol. It's got a little bit of bite to it. Um, but you put it with that type of dessert. Um, I wouldn't put it with chocolate. Not not at all. But like lighter lighter desserts. So vanilla type of desserts or things of that nature, like a cheesecake or tort, something along those lines, rather than just straight up, oh, I'm gonna have chocolate. Because, well, first of all, chocolate and port is the traditional pairing. It's not so much with sherry, so you get more of a nuttiness to it. You could totally just have this on its own if you wanted to. It's not, again, it's not sweet, it's dry. It's very dry. Um, but it's, it's like having like a, like, a, like a nut cookie type of thing that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Um, Again, like the Toblerone, so the uh, you know the uh, Taran, that type of the type of thing. If you if you start if you ended the night again with one of those types of um, types of confectionaries, that you, it would be it would be outstanding. It'd be really enhanced. Um, you know, pecan pie. I could totally. I'm not a big pecan pie, pecan pie fan, but I could totally see this because you got a little bit of the caramelization. Um, you got the nuttiness to it. It might be a little overkill with the flavors. But I could totally see having this or having that type of pairing that you're, maybe something that this doesn't have nuts in it, but if you added nuts to it, it would be great. So you do it in the form of having this sherry. Really nice. The only problem with this is I had to buy it online and I spent almost twice as much money for the bottle. I mean, it's an $18, oh, my nose really is starting to stuff up. Um, it's an $18 bottle of wine. So kind of pricey for a half bottle. 
All right, so remember this is like a thirty-six dollar bottle of wine, but it's a wine that you're gonna you're gonna be able to um, once you open it, it's going to uh, stay just fine for quite a while because it's already been oxidized. You're not gonna you can't you can't harm it anymore. It's already been done. So um, that's the great things about like especially with uh, Marsala's and with uh, with Sherry's is that all the stuff you could have done to the wine has already been done. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's already been done, <laughs> you know, um, what's the other, what's the other one? Um, um, got the other four, four to five wine I'm trying to think of. Anyway, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Any of these bottles, totally look out, try to get it and, uh, check it out. Now we'll do a couple things real quick. Um, stuff, other stuff I bought recently, I bought this little wine key. And I bought it, one, because it has this little, um, these little nubs here. So you can, you can just one hand, one hand it. And I'm really going to love this because I'm going to take this to work and I'm going to use this. The other thing that's awesome, it's not a serrated edge. Now, it's not super, super sharp, but it's not serrated edge. So it's not destroying the, uh, the foil when I cut it. And, uh, I mean, it's a double clutch, you know, whatever. The, the, the worm does a pretty good job. Got it off of Woot, uh, Wine Woot. I didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. I got two of these and it has like rosewood inlay. It was like a random thing to get whatever. Mixed reviews on it. Some people didn't like the blade because they said it wasn't sharp enough. Um, some people said that the wood wasn't, didn't look like the wood was really put in very well. Um, it claimed it was like a $100, uh, $100 retail, probably for both, for two of them. And I got two of exactly the same type. I like it, it's pretty cool. The other thing that I'm really excited about, and I'm using two of them right now, this is the dead one. The first one I got doesn't work. But this is the little battery pack that goes on my lights. Now, it's not a battery pack because it plugs in to a wall socket. You plug it in here. And now I don't have to worry about batteries. I'm so stoked because I was going to get new lights that had, uh, you know, you could plug in with, a, with an adapter. You had to buy your own adapter. Or you could use batteries. And I was going to buy new batteries anyway. Well, I can still keep these batteries, but I'm probably going to switch to the style that this battery is, which is the Sony style, because they fit really nice in there. Whereas these, you got to shove them in and the contacts don't really go so well. When you recharge them, they don't always make contact with the recharger. So I'm not really happy with these batteries, other than they really last a long time. I've been using this one on the center light, and it's on mostly full brightness. These are fully, fully bright, so really like these. Um, I forgot how much I paid for this, but you can find it on Amazon. It's called by newer N E E W E R, like DC adapter, blah, blah, blah. I think they're like, like eight bucks each or something like that. So really nice. I'm really excited about that. Cannot wait for the next one. The third one to come in, I'll be totally set. And then I bought some like soft, you know, little like, um, things to put on the lights to make it a little bit softer on the light. Um, even though I already have these filters on there. And then what else did I get? I got some other stuff. I'm not going to go through the whole, whole litany of everything, but good stuff. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Go out, go and get some Spanish food. Bring some wine over if you're going to uh, to uh, somebody's house that's going to serve that type of food. Or just, you know, you're going to have just good old American style stuff. You want to have a little bit of Spanish variety on your, uh, on your table there for Christmas. Um, anyway, uh, check it out. Check out some sherry. It's uh, not drunk a lot, but it's uh, rel relatively inexpensive, especially if you get like the Finos. Those are really cheap and they're really good. Um, so check it out. And um, we're going to see everyone again. Oh, yeah. Turn me up above. Hit the link over there to send some money my way. And uh, links below to all the information about this. And we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>